Hey guys, what's up? In this video, what we're looking at is uh, MongoDB, and we're looking at the good and bad of MongoDB. So we're trying to figure out whether or not this is going to be a good option for us. And um, really what, what we kind of compare is we look at whether or not MongoDB uh, being what it is, is it better than your traditional relational database um, that is like MySQL, uh, Oracle, PostgreSQL, or any of those other um, relational databases. So first we need to look at uh, you know what MongoDB is. All right, so MongoDB is a uh, database system that was uh, created several years ago the company was created by mongodb incorporated and you can see it has a, a few founders um, that actually went ahead and built the company back in 2007 and they're out of palo alto california so silicon valley and they have a lot of uh, venture capital funding and they've had a lot of help in being able to um, you know build this it was originally built by tengen which is the, the name of the company before it became mongodb incorporated um, and you can see it over here. So it's now been changed to MongoDB Incorporated. And just recently, MongoDB has actually released a um, a new plan to be able to to support more corporate database structures. So uh, the bottom line is that um, that MongoDB is is and was created by a large company. The company's growing, and MongoDB is now being adopted by a lot of actual you know major websites out there from um, sites that include like MTV. Foursquare, uh, Forbes.com, and a bunch of other ones like uh, the GE company, General Electric. Uh, so there, there is um, a lot of companies using MongoDB. So we're going to be looking at the good of MongoDB. Like, what are the good things about it? So number one, uh, MongoDB makes it very, very much easier uh, to actually scale your your database out horizontally, um, which is also known as sharding. And uh, MongoDB does that seamlessly where you don't even have to bring your database down. You can just essentially add another MongoDB instance and MongoDB actually handles um, load balancing between the two MongoDB instances that you have. And maybe you have 100 instances that are using, you know, across different servers. Um, well, MongoDB handles all of that, that complication for you. If you were using like a relational database like uh, MySQL, um, it, it takes a lot of skill and, and um, and expertise to be able to to shard out as well using something like um, you know, MySQL where databases have to be in communication with each other as to what's being written to and being read from and um, MongoDB just handles a lot of that out of the box where you're not going to find that with MySQL so if you're using one MySQL instance and most websites are but if you you know grow to become big and you have to have multiple MySQL databases on a cluster uh, things get very very complicated and MongoDB was made specifically to ease that sort of transition so um, that is one part and one area where it does shine so mongodb is schema list um, so you have a database schema which is um, your actual uh, database design so when you're in like mysql a traditional relational database you're going to define your your columns uh, and tables so you'll have like a music table and then the music table will have columns like you know music artist um, you know genre location so you have all that you know the database table uh, defined and then you go ahead and build that table um, however everything you insert into that table has to follow the same schema so it, it becomes very difficult when you have a MySQL database with millions of records and then you want to add a new column to your database table um, let's just say you, you add a new new column for a label like a record label now you have this new column and you have to update a million records with this new data because you can't just have you know maybe you you have a column where the data can't be null so you have a million invalid uh, records in your database now and um, that's known as database migration where you end up having to take uh, an existing database table and migrating it to a new database structure because your schema has uh, has changed MongoDB doesn't have a schema so you can just change your document type and it's just going to work you know, seamlessly without having to, to deal with uh, following up a lot of your existing data that's in your MongoDB uh, instance or database. All right, MongoDB is uh, JSON, or I'm sorry, JavaScript for the most part. So uh, JavaScript is Java, Java, uh, JavaScript object notation. Um, so 
JSON is uh, you know, the main data transfer language that you have in, among websites now. It's um, XML is still popular, but JSON is now probably the most popular uh, with all the RESTful services out there. So the JSON data that is being returned by your MongoDB database um, can be used um, directly with you know uh, client-side frameworks, JavaScript frame frameworks that deal with JSON data. So frameworks like uh, React or Angular, um, th they are all uh, frameworks built around uh, JSON for the most part, so dealing with JSON data and being able to build components in your website from that data. Um, well, MongoDB gives it back to you in the format that you need, so um, you don't have to do any sort of transition from getting a bunch of data from a typical relational database like MySQL and then having to serialize that into a valid JSON syntax and return it from uh, the server. So that's one advantage of, of MongoDB is that that transaction is already in JSON format. Um, that's a typo there, but MongoDB is uh, NoSQL database, so it's it's not relational at all. So um, what that means is that you, and this is actually a good and a bad, because typically when you have uh, a relational database, you could have several tables that are connected to each other. So you have like a person table, and then you have a, um, a, let's just say a band table, and a band table could point to multiple person objects, right? Well, in MongoDB, you actually don't have that. You actually have one document um, object. So basically, you have one object where instead of pointing to addition, uh, other tables that are within, um, well, what you would call a table in that particular structure, you're just going to have the people objects be embedded in your MongoDB object instance. So um, it's a, it's a little bit different in, in that you're not pointing to these, you know, relational um, objects. I mean, it's all just within your MongoDB uh, instance or your object. So, uh, MongoDB is very performant. However, a lot of the benchmarks are misleading. So, everything I've seen to say that MongoDB is somehow magically faster than relational databases, the bottom line is that there's really no magic bullet um, just because. Um, you know, some query performs better in some particular instance. Um, a lot of that can be it can be uh, you know the way the code is written or the hardware on which the the code is being executed. Um, a lot of different things that would um, you know give you skewed results as to whether or not a typical relational database is faster or a NoSQL database like M MongoDB is faster. So the bottom line is that they're both very performant. Um, I just went ahead and mentioned that Mongo is performant here. All right, now we're going to get into some of the bad of MongoDB. It cannot do SQL joins because um, you know there are no relational um, there, there there's no relationships in MongoDB. So like uh, typically when you do a SQL query, you can SQL uh, data from multiple tables and then join all that data together into one uh, you know one object, and that's not something that MongoDB can do. Um, you would actually have to do that. Um, and manually and, and doing workarounds to be able to achieve a, a similar result. So a lot of people say you shouldn't be doing a lot of joins in MySQL anyway because they're not very performant, but the bottom line is you can't do it in MongoDB. So I'm not a database expert, but that's definitely a downside that I hear from MongoDB. Um, data design needs to be thought out well since it's not relational, meaning that you can't just add an additional table and then point to that using you know relationships in a typical relational database, uh, or like you could in a typical relational database. In MongoDB, you really need to think out how um, you know these embedded objects are going to work and and um, and try to you know get all of that resolved while you're designing your database. So if you if you know that you're going to have a band object and the band's going to have multiple people embedded. Uh, within it, you need to make sure that you don't want to eventually just you know add a new uh, record label object, and um, otherwise, you know you could you could run into some problems. So basically, it's it's a downside that you're supposed to be able to try to make sure that you're not going to be having to, having to change your MongoDB database structure uh, a whole lot after you you uh, go ahead and and think it out initially. Uh, this is one of the big things that MongoDB is, is not good for is ACID transactions. So ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. 
And um, basically, it's a set of uh, properties that guarantee a database transaction is either going to go through fully or it's not going to try to execute at all. So basically, if anything fails and sort of like if you're updating uh, several areas and, and one area fails, um, the entire transaction will be rolled back and fail in a normal, um, you know, acid safe relational database structure. In MongoDB, um, it doesn't do that. So you can have partial updates run into some sort of error, and then your database could be uh, fouled up to an extent. So you could have like a, an insert that you did, and only half of it got inserted. So essentially, you lost the other half of data, and you have bad data in there because you. Um, you only updated half of the query and you never failed. Like in a normal relational database that's acid safe, it would go ahead and update, run the fail, and then just retract itself and, and that database entry wouldn't be there. So it's really bad that you can end up having a, a messed up database. And that also goes into the um, the next part here is that uh, MongoDB has been known to have lost information. So you want to back up your database often, like literally, like you could do a transaction, and from what I hear, um, half that data could just be you know just disappear in the process. So um, it's not really proven or anything like that, as far as I know. Um, you know, but there are just bugs that are reported where apparently it, it's not the data is not 100% safe at all times. So if you do complicated transactions. Um, you could run into a problem where your database is just not, or your data is not there like it should be. Um, so that being said, just make sure you're backing up your data often if you're using uh, MongoDB. Uh, so really, guys, that's that's really the, all the, the pros and cons that I can think of with MongoDB. Um, there's not a whole lot of alternatives if you want to stick in the JavaScript world. Um, something that's good with Node.js, um, MongoDB is definitely like a, a partner with Node. Um, it's part of the mean stack, which, um, you know, it's a Node, Express, Mongo, and um, Angular. And um, it's definitely getting a lot more corporate support as of late. It's getting a lot more money. It's actually starting to find ways of being able to make money to try to keep it, uh, keep it around for longevity. Um, there's a few other NoSQL alternatives out there, but um, none of them are, um, are, many of them are actually much more complicated than what MongoDB would be. And um, ultimately, you know, it's going to get better as, as time goes on, and it's still a relatively futuristic um, set of technology. So uh, if you want to be in the here and now, it's probably a good idea to use MongoDB. Um, if you want to be a little bit more safe or if you're building some sort of financial um, transaction or, you know, some important data like real-time analysis and things like that, you may want to stick with a traditional relational database. And um, as far as the sharding, um, capabilities between either a, a relational database like MySQL or using MongoDB. A lot of companies, a lot of you know, simple websites are never going to have to run into any sort of scalability issues like that, but uh, if you are looking to be big, you can succeed using both, but you might have an easier time as a smaller operation using something like MongoDB than uh, trying to get database experts involved in um, clustering and sharding a um, relational MySQL setup. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day. Please subscribe and vote up the video if you could, please. Thank you. Bye.